massive Steam Deck updates with brand new features are far and few between. But if you're the type of person that wants brand new features on your Steam Deck, then Decky, the plugin framework, is for you. So let's get Decky on your Steam Deck. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass, and today we're modernizing the old Decky tutorial. It's been almost a year since Volume 5 initially aired, and, you know, obviously some things change. So for those not in the know, Decky is a plugin framework that allows you to install plugins onto your Steam Deck, extending functionality. Things like being able to customize your Steam Deck's interface, or change the sound effects, control music from other sources, and much, much more. With the Decky plugin framework, all of this and more is possible. Now a bit of a fair warning with Steam Deck updates and Decky. Sometimes new Steam Deck updates will break Decky, and as a result you will need to reinstall Decky once more. Reinstalling Decky should maintain all of your settings that you already had before, including installed plugins. So let's get to installing Decky, but before that, if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading good gospel of high-tech lowlife really lets the YouTube algorithm know that you want more high-tech lowlife. To install Decky, you will need to be in desktop mode. As per usual, you can access desktop mode by going to the power menu and pressing switch to desktop. You'll then open your web browser of choice and then type in Decky in Google, like so. And the first result should be the actual website itself. Decky.xyz. So you can go ahead and download it. Yes, this is perfectly safe. Don't worry about it. Interestingly enough, Firefox downloads files as .download files, so just get rid of that .download file and you'll be good to go. From there, you'll want to run deckyinstaller.desktop. If you've set up a pseudo password, you can enter it right here. But of course, if you haven't set one up, then the decky installer should help you out here. It'll temporarily set an admin password and then erase the admin password afterwards. So once you type in your password to let Decky do the work for you, you can choose to either install the latest release version or install the latest pre-release version. The latest release version is best for stable SteamOS, and the latest pre-release is good for those running beta or preview channels of SteamOS. Additionally, if you've already installed SteamOS and you're rerunning the installer, you can choose to either uninstall Decky, preserving your settings and configurations and plugins and whatnot, or you can choose to wipe Decky off entirely, which will delete everything related to Decky, including your installed plugins. Because I like to live on the edge and daily drive beta software, we're going to do the latest pre-release. But I suspect most people are on the stable channel, and in that case, you would select the stable branch. It won't take too long to install, all you have to do is give it a few seconds and it'll finish up. Now let's go back to game mode. To access Decky and the plugins, all you have to do is press the quick access menu button, you know, the triple dots button, you'll see a brand new plugin icon right here, towards the bottom. And it'll give you a list of all of your installed plugins as well as the option to download more plugins and just general settings. It's from this settings menu that you can choose to update your plugins, reinstall them, uninstall them, or even just install updates for Decky itself and change the beta participation branch. And of course, you can also check out the Decky store. You can download plugins right here. Many of which work out of the box, but some do require some configuration. So all you need to do is scroll down and look for some that look interesting to you, and then press install. Like, look at this. Decky Undervolt? You know I gotta install this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press install, then press install again, and then... Wow. It's installed. Who'd have thunk it, right? As far as I'm aware, there aren't any real limits to how many plugins you can install at once. But to be honest, I wouldn't recommend installing all 60 plus plugins. As for performance, Decky by itself doesn't really impact performance in a meaningful way. The plugins, however, may, depending on what plugins you have installed. In my experience, games perform about the same as they were before, give or take. And now, let's get to the good part. Instead of talking about just Decky plugins I recommend, let's talk about all the Decky plugins I've installed. Audio Loader lets you change the existing sound effects on your Steam Deck, all the menu selection stuff, etc, etc. There are a couple of packs available you can download directly from their repo. This extension used to support background music, but the feature has since been deprecated.
Steam Grid DB lets you change the game artwork on the fly. It used to be that you would have to go into desktop mode and change all of this, but now in game mode you can do this directly from the comfort of your Steam UI. Let's take this non-Steam game for example, AM2R, a Metroid fan game. Just press start on it and then go to change artwork and then voila. You can change all of the artwork. Just select a capsule, a wide capsule, a hero, a logo, an icon, and you're golden. As you can see here, you can just select all of these, press A, and it starts to download instantly. All of these are sourced from Steam Grid DB, and if you end up making your own, you can always upload them to Steam Grid DB. And look at that, it looks like a game on Steam now. Isn't that crazy? Tab Master lets you add and remove tabs from your Steam library. In my case, I have a special tab for demos because I do a lot of Steam Deck Next Fest coverage. But you can make your own custom tabs with a number of different things, a number of different filters, a lot of logic as well. You can create tabs based on user tags or create tabs based on things like is a demo. In addition to creating these new tabs, you can also delete them as well. Like for example, I don't need this demo tab anymore because the next fest is over, for now that is. Reshade Deck allows you to apply shaders to your Steam Deck screen. There are a couple of shaders built in already. Like for example, this CRT filter right here. As you can see here, it kind of looks like it's a CRT. Obviously it's not perfect and it's not super accurate. But you know what, what the heck, we're gonna play with it a little bit. Now obviously, if you wanna play on a real CRT, then just find a real CRT. I'm sure people are giving those away on like Facebook Marketplace or something. And yes, these shaders also affect gameplay as well. Depending on how heavy your shaders are, it could affect gameplay performance as well, so do keep that in mind. Look at this, I have a modded version of Halo 2 on a CRT filter. I think it's pretty neat, but if you want an actual CRT, then, you know, just get one. It also has a quote-unquote screensaver function, which is useful in case you have a Steam Deck OLED and you're downloading a bunch of games at once and you don't want to keep your screen up all the time. There are also more shaders you can download and install yourself. I don't know which shaders to use because I'm not super into shaders myself, but you can always find them on the internet. Decky Undervolt on paper is what it sounds like. It's a software undervolt for your Steam Deck. Now, to be honest, I'm not super familiar with this plugin, so I'm not going to talk about how to use it and whatnot, not right now at least, but I'll figure it out at some point. You can also set an undervolt per game as well. Do note that sometimes undervolts can cause issues, so naturally your mileage may vary. Mango Peel lets you customize the performance overlay. In addition to what Steam shows you by default, you can also change, well, a number of things. You can change what information is being shown, you can also change the CPU text, you can change what's being shown. There's a lot of customization here. Maybe a little too much customization for the average gamer. To be honest, if you're not the sort of person that does benchmarking, then you might not need Mango Peel. But it is cool to have regardless. If you're someone that likes to listen to things in the background, then this plugin is for you. This is a music control plugin. This lets you, well, control music that's in the background without having to switch between your game and also like Google Chrome or something like that. Let's say, for example, I wanted to listen to my brand new podcast that I started with Gardner Bryant and Games Revealed. It's called Off the Console if you're interested. You know, rather than telling you what the plugin does, I'll just show you what it does. Welcome to Off the Console, the hottest new podcast where we talk about video games and all sorts of nerd, cool nerd stuff. And today, we have one of the coolest nerds in our podcast, Retro Game Core. How are you doing? Good. Uh, it's good to be on here. You know, I, I haven't been on somebody else's podcast in so long, so I'm a little nervous. I'm like, oh, where's Bill? You know, like, <laughs> I love it. This is great. Now, obviously, you'll have to turn on the in-game audio, unless you're okay with both game sounds and your background music intermingling with one another. Proton DB badges add Proton DB badges to your game entries. Like, for example, Final Fantasy 16 has a silver rating on Proton DB. While the game is Steam Deck unsupported, the game does in fact run on Steam Deck, and yes, it runs on PC as well. Do keep in mind that Proton DB isn't Steam Deck only, it's also like Linux PC in general. And clicking on the icon takes you to Proton DB itself, where you'll see people's suggestions for making games run better or making games that don't work at all run on Steam Deck. 
You can also change how the Proton DB badges show up. You can make them smaller or bigger if so desired. In theory, Quick Launch is supposed to be able to launch any flat pack you have installed in your Steam Deck without having to add it as a non-Steam game. But in my experience, it didn't seem to work at all. You can, however, add these flat packs as non-Steam games directly in game mode if so desired by creating a shortcut. Screenshot Uploader automatically uploads screenshots you take on your Steam Deck to your Steam account. You can make all of these automatic updates public or private as so desired. And let's look. We're going to try it right now. We're going to take a screenshot and then see if it goes into our Steam account. You can take a screenshot by holding the Steam button and R1 at the same time. And let's see if it does anything. Oh, look at that. Screenshot uploaded. Privacy state private. Good. But now for the ultimate test. Let's see if it actually uploaded anywhere. We're going to pull up Steam on our desktop right here. And wow, look at that. Our screenshot that we just took is on here. Isn't that crazy? Now, obviously I had to set the private so no one could see it, but I guess you guys are seeing it right now, so there's that too. You can also access these screenshots on your phone via the Steam app as well. That's kind of sick, actually. The next plugin to talk about, of course, is Wine Cellar. Wine Cellar is kind of like Proton UpQT. You can install different versions of Proton GE and manage them directly in game mode. You can just select some to install or select some to uninstall. Do know that if you uninstall or install some new versions of Proton GE or other compatibility layers, you will need to restart your Steam Deck to have them show up. Deck MTP is a plugin that lets you basically plug your Steam Deck into a computer and have the micro SD card and internal hard drive read as a USB drive, and you should be able to copy things via USB 3 cable. It requires some setup, and today, I don't feel like setting it up. Now, CSS Loader, though, is super interesting. You guys notice how my interface looks a little different from everyone else's? That's because of CSS Loader. And CSS Loader itself has its own store where you can download themes and then just apply them and make changes as needed. In fact, my current look is a combination of multiple different themes going together. Something that's a little crazy, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with going a little crazy. Plus, perfection takes a while to achieve, so play around with it. Just figure out what you want it to look like, then there's that as well. I've spent an ungodly amount of time making my Steam Deck look great. And you can too, just by downloading CSS Loader. Combine that with Audio Loader and you can make your own perfect interface. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Anyways. I think that about covers all the plugins I actually use. This is still a Steam Deck OLED at the end of the day, but I've radically changed its functionality. I've changed how it looks, and my god, it's great. The reason why Decky is so important is because Valve likes to look at Decky features and sometimes add them as official SteamOS features. It's insane how much functionality Decky can add. And yes, even as I'm editing this video, I am currently making my Steam Deck look perfect via CSS Loader. Maybe one day when I perfect the look, I can tell you all the themes I used in conjunction to make this my own Steam Deck. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.